Creative Katie here. Welcome to my channel, Mixed Media Creations. Today we have a mixed media door hanger for you, and there's a sneak peek of the finished and fun project. Now, while I am painting this on a wooden door hanger, you can do this on an art journal page of whatever size you want. And in fact, I plan on using the Flamingo and putting it on a page in a very similar fashion to what I'm doing here. So first off, I'm just giving this a coat of light blue permanent and bright aqua, and I'm just mixing those colors. Again, I don't like just putting one color down. This is just kind of a base coat, so I'm not being too particular at all. I just want that blue green. Now I wanted to add a little bit of detail before I apply a stencil. So I grab my shelf liner and I've got black paint on my craft glass media mat and I'm just putting the black on that. It gives little dots and it's just texturized. There's a lot of big spaces on my stencil which you'll see. So I knew there would be maybe a little more interest peeking through. Now the focal point that I have is a flamingo, so it's kind of that peachy orangey color, pinky orangey color. So I wanted to introduce that a little bit to the background and instead of splattering, which I seem to be doing a lot of these days, I thought, you know, I'm just going to come in with the shelf liner again. I've got the pink and the black, which are the colors primarily of that flamingo. So I'm just mixing up the paint, spreading it with the makeup sponge. You can just see it on the bottom right hand corner and then putting the shelf liner in there. Now just FYI, my, this shelf liner, I don't wash it. I use it and use it and use it. it the paint doesn't seem to fall off. Um, I've attempted to clean it. It's too difficult. And you know, when I get to the end, when it gets too gunked up, I'll just get another sheet of shelf liner at the dollar store. So you saw a sneak peek of the background. We've got some pattern, we've got some interest there. Because I'm gluing the focal image on, I didn't want to put texture. So here's the stencil that I was talking about. You can see the wide open spaces and why I may choose to put a fine detail that's going to peek through. Now this stencil is from the Crafters Workshop and it's called Art Deco Leaves. And instead of going up and down, I decided to go side to side. And I'm sponging on paint, this is Prussian blue, through the stencil. And I just had to take a peek here because I just wanted to know if it, what I was imagining it was gonna look like in my head is happening. It's always a, happy surprise to me sometimes how the stencil looks in the end. I'm just stenciling this in there. Remember I talked about how you could take this and do this on an art journal page and it's challenging with something so narrow with the hole at the top. If you were on an art journal page you would have more space to build up your background and there would be room for a textural element as well as other patterns. But when you're working on a small space, less is often more. So I'm just taking that blue, Prussian blue on a makeup sponge and I'm just going around the edges here just to clean it up. And I just love that pattern. It's a slightly tropical feel that goes with the flamingo. Now I cut this flamingo, this was a cut file from Silhouette and I cut a base one out of mixed media paper, the white that you see, and then I cut the body and the wing from some of my gel prints that I have in my stash. People keep asking, what do you do with your gel prints? This is one of the things that I am doing. I'm finally learning how to use my Silhouette Cameo and getting it done. So I found this quote, don't make me put my foot down. And I just giggled. I just knew I had to do an art journal page or some mixed media piece with that quote. And I typed it in a kind of fun, playful font. 
that's how it reads to me. And I wanted it a little bit bold because I want the black, white, pink in there. So instead of doing all the layers that the actual cut file had, I'm just going to paint this part of the bird, flamingo black, and I'm going to paint the legs yellow. Now, initially I use my Naples yellow, but I do go back and apply gold to it. Just because I had gold, I add gold in the background, and I always like to have it in more than one place. And the Naples yellow is very, very much the same color as the gold, but the gold has the added shimmer. So I am at the very end of my gel medium. And when it's all gunked in like that, if you spray it, spray the sides and close the lid, it, it softens it up and you can just use every little last bit. So now I'm gluing this down. And if you're a card maker, please don't laugh. This is why I don't do cards because I don't, I'm not very good at the preci precision parts. So I'm just gluing that down with the gel medium, making sure that I get good adhesion all the way around. And then I'm gluing the wing down. Now, there's not much difference between the wing and the body of the bird. And I could have cut it out a totally different paper. And I do for other projects. But you're going to see when I shade, that's all going to um, pop. So I grab the gold. Now I've got some gold that I've thinned down and I've put it in this little container. I'm doing a lot of creating, getting ready for a craft fair. And so I just mixed up some watered down gold paint. And I think I'm gonna do the same with white and black for those splatters. And then I don't have to keep mixing it every time. And I'm only mixing, you know, enough to go by. I'm not mixing the whole container. So now that I have the gold there, that's when I changed the legs and put the gold on there. Positioned my words, and I kind of, again, with the playful kind of tone I wanted to go with, I just kind of skewed it going, you know, not perfectly straight. And I'm just applying gel medium underneath and on top. And I'm putting the words, you know, from top to bottom. So your eye goes from the top all the way down. So I will put a link to the stencil as well as the door, wooden door hangers in the description box below in my Amazon store. So if you shop there, what you need to know is it doesn't cost you any more, but please always double check the pricing and the shipping. Make sure you're getting the best deal for you. What I link to... At the time, I try to pick a good one that's no shipping and a, and a good price, but they that changes over time, and I just want everybody to, you know, get the best possible deals. So I definitely am going to be doing more with flamingos and I and I want to do the flamingos on a lar much larger scale on a 10 by 20 canvas. So this is a good way of playing with it and getting ideas when you work small and you know and then taking it to a larger um, substrate. So I'm coming in and I'm shading and I just make a choice to do blue. Now that's because I wanted to tie it into the background, or at least that's what I was thinking at this time. So the shading 
take some time and it's called acrylic float acrylic floating acrylics and I'm doing a very lazy use of that technique it's something that I learned in my folk art painting and I just find it's easier to shade that way especially since and it's better because it's with acrylic paint that is permanent when dry as opposed to using some shading techniques like the Stabilo wall pencil that are not permanent and I'm going to be varnishing this so that's why I want to go with permanent a permanent um, shading technique so I didn't mind it with the blue but there wasn't enough pizzazz so I do come back and I do shade with black as well and you actually get some of the blue and the black and it actually looks really good so I grab the black here and I'm shading on the outside and this kind of gives the penguin the, or penguin the, the flamingo it kind of pops off the page a little bit it's adding dimension or the appearance of being more 3d and then I just continue and I actually go over where I put the blue as I was saying the float technique is a technique to practice there are videos out there I have not made a direct video maybe it's something I'll do on my in my Facebook group on a live it's, it's very difficult to film because you need to be so close up and things get out of the camera's view very very easily And there you can see the difference. The black just made it stand out all the more. Now remember, if you were doing this on a larger scale, it would be easier to shade than on these tiny little things. So if you are trying the float technique, don't do tiny little things. Work on a bigger scale. Now, if you don't have a cameo silhouette and or Cricut and you want to cut these out, you know, find a template, print it out on paper, and you can do it the old-fashioned way with scissors. And really, if you're doing one of, or just, you know, it's it's not going to take that much time. So I grabbed my fine line bottle and I'm going around the words, kind of cross hatching there a little bit. And I'm not trying to be so exactly precise because you can't be. Inevitably, we're going to shake, we're going to wiggle, and it's not going to be perfect. So And since I typically always do this, when I put my words down, I try to think, uh, remember that, so that I don't end up having difficulty going around the words. I find by doing this, it makes the words fit in more with the background or with the whole. It just kind of blends it all together. In the final pictures, you're going to note that I uh, put a heart, a little tiny heart I put on the wing. Here I'm using a Secura glaze pen and I'm dotting the eye. Now the Secura glaze pen is a new purchase that I've just made and it is dimensional. It's shiny and it's dimensional and it's permanent when dry. So for finer details, especially on smaller items like that, like the Flamingo and things that I would be putting on coasters, I will be using it. But going around the outside edges and around the words, I'm still going to favor my fine line bottle. It's just easier. 
but it's a little more difficult when you're doing smaller scale elements and focal images. So here's the, here's the glaze pen. And I'm just doing just a little bit of an effect here with it. And I'm doing stitching there. And then I decide to go around the body of the flamingo as well. But instead of doing the stitching, because I thought that would just be too busy, I just went as a straight line. And you can mix those up. There's nothing saying you have to do all stitch work. Now the, the glaze pans, you, it takes a while for them to dry, so you have to be careful not to put your fingers in it until it's perfectly dry. And I'd like to thank my friend, Nikki, for the idea of the glaze pens. It's something that she has used in her art. And I finally said, oh, you know what? I'm gonna order myself some and I'm gonna give them a try. And I love them. The black is absolutely luscious. And it's a nice kind of broad tipped. It flows so nicely. So thank you very much for joining me. Leave me a comment below. Give me a thumbs up. If you have a suggestion for a craft fair idea, put that in the description, the comment box. Here's some pictures of the final door hanger project. See you for the next video.